What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to uh, another video. Oh, wow. Yeah, I forgot that I haven't put the walking animation in yet. Anyway, uh, okay, so what, what are we doing today? This software that you see, I've never actually uh, done a video on before, but this is the Unity 3D game engine. Um, and I do a lot of game design. I haven't done any videos on it yet. Uh, most of my videos have been in Blender, the 3D modeling and animation aspect of this. But this video in particular is going to be addressing uh, something that I was struggling with for a while, and I finally figured it out, and that's getting controller input correctly mapped and ready so that when you're testing out your game in here, you can use either the uh, controller or the keyboard and mouse. See, so right now, I'm using the keyboard and mouse, and then using the controller there. My rapid spins! Uh, but yeah, so, I'll show you guys real quick, just so you can... What's that? This is my, this is my Corona Stay Home attire. Anyway, so, let's go back to the game. Got my... My controller. This, by the way, too, is just like a, a wireless Xbox 360 controller with the old, uh, the old dingle dongle. You know, USB. You just plug that in. This will work too for uh, like PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and everything like that. It's just going to be a little different how you word it. Uh, but anyway, so you had the game right there. Right now, I'm using the mouse. Let's see. So right stick, and then he's looking around. Left stick, he's moving. I don't have a walk animation, so right now you just slide. Like he's Iceman or some shit. And then when I hold the sprint button, which is R1, he starts running. When I hit X, he jumps. Not the best animation, quick and dirty. Just wanted to get this done real quick. Anyway, so, versus the keyboard, with the space bar and all, and all that kind of shit. So, how did I do this? Right, well. Here is my script. This is not going to be a, a coding course. So let me turn my face off right quick. My face taking up the whole damn screen. Could you even see that just now? Okay, yeah. So you, so you guys can see it. All right, cool. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Let me turn that off. All right. So this is not going to be a scripting uh, tutorial. If you want me to do one of those, just leave a comment and I'll go into it a, a little deeper. Uh, but basically, I got like this real quick setup. Um, and the, here's the important parts right here. So I, I have uh, my sprint function and my uh, jump function, which um, normally when you when you're dealing with input, you know you got like input either get key or get button or whatever, and then you can type in like like if you're doing key uh, if you're doing keyboard and mouse specifically, and you wanted uh, the jump button to be space, which normally it is, uh, you could do you could do like like this here. I'm gonna comment this out so that it doesn't actually. Well, yeah, let me let me do it first because it'll autofill, uh, and then I'll comment it out afterward. Uh, but you would do like, let's say, if not two apps. Input dot get key down. Down is uh when it had like it it'll execute it on the frame that it happened. If you would just did get key, it would be like if you were holding the button down. Uh, so if we just wanted it to be space bar, um, and we just wanted it to happen when we press the space bar, it would be get key down. And then in parentheses, key code dot space, and then you would come down here and blah 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 blah. Do your code as as usual, whatever you want to happen when it would have space. Right now, mine uh, when it does the jump function, which in this case would be space if you were just doing keyboard and mouse, I have my actual jump function, which is down here. Uh, and that's just, that's linking to something else in a different script. But anyway, the point is, if you were just doing keyboard and mouse, this is how you would normally do it. You would do a key code specifically, and then you do a space bar. If you want there to be multiple inputs available to your players, where you can do keyboard and mouse, or you can do a uh, controller, then you want to do it like how I have it set up here. So let me get rid of this real quick. And so here I have input, got, got get button, uh, and get button will work for either keyboard or controller. And then I have the actual sprint action or move. 
yeah, no, you know, action is the best word for it. Whatever action you want to have happen is what you want to put in here, but it has to be in string form. So you got the two parentheses, you have the action name there, and then you have your your actual code. Uh, now, here is where it gets tricky. So this is using the old input system. Uh, there's a whole new input system. I tried messing around with it. It wasn't working for me. There are probably people more knowledgeable about it who could, you know, who have better tutorials on how to make it work. But I couldn't make it work with the new input system. So this is still using the old input system. Uh, but anyway, if I went to preferences. No, I didn't. I lied. There we go. I went to project settings, and you go to input manager, and this is the old input system. All right, so normally I think this is is at like 30, I want to say. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so normally it's it's at 30. Um, and you'll see here you have like a jump function, you have your axes and all that kind of stuff. Blah blah blah. blah. Uh, this was the most recent jump function that I created. Some of these will already be duplicated. Like you see, there's fire one and fire two, but this is for alternate buttons. So, and then down here you see it says joystick button zero. Now that's the important part because all of the ones that you need to create for a controller, you have to word it specifically exactly the same way every time or it will not work. So for example, jump here. The button in order to jump is space, and here is the actual jump name. I have another one down here that you saw earlier, so I'll show you the difference in just a sec. Jump button, space, I don't really worry about any of this stuff. You can leave it if you want. Uh, but anyway, there's the regular jump, the space button, and that makes you jump when you hit the space button, as long as you have the coding and animation to do that. Now this one down here, same name, jump. But you'll see that the positive button it says joystick button zero. Still says key or mouse button. Uh, X axis motion from all joysticks. This is the important part right here. Joystick button zero. How did I get that? If you look up, and I've already done it. Unity controller mapping. You'll get a bunch of images. I'm just in the images section, uh, but you can click Xbox One, PS4. Like I showed you guys earlier, I'm just using a wireless Xbox 360 controller. So this is the image that I selected. You see right here, A, which is, you know, typically the jump button, A, X, whatever controller you're using, uh, has a zero next to it. One, three, two, R1 is five, right? Um, so that's how you have to do it. it. You know, regardless of what you're using, like if you were using this PlayStation 4 controller, see, this is actually a better example, this PlayStation 1, because it shows you exactly the wording that you need to use. Now, it's going to be a different number simply because the controller is slightly different. Like, see the X, where the A button would normally be, and this one is one instead of zero, and the box button is actually zero. I'm gonna get a bunch of people talking shit in the comments about how I just said box. Anyway, you get the idea. You have to follow the numbers specifically for the controller that you're using, but the important part is that whenever you type it out, it has to be in all lowercase and say joystick, space, button, space, and then whatever number you're using. That is how, with the old input system, it's going to know exactly what button you're pressing. So, based on this here, since this is the one that I'm using, and I told you that the R1 button is sprint, what do you guys think it'll say in the thing? Joystick, space, button, space, five, right? That would make sense. So let's take a look. Now, it says I have three sprint functions. That's just because whenever you up this number by one, it repeats the last one, right? So, these two are empty. This is the one that actually has my sprint function in it. So, we agree, joystick button five, right? Well, left shift. That's because the first one is for keyboard. So, second one. Joystick, button, five. So, this is how, this right here, the old input manager, this is how you gotta do it. Joystick, but now, now you could have like four different sprint functions that are linked to each controller that you want the player to have the ability to use. So, I could make this, really realistically, you can't change the name because when when you're calling the name from the script, it has to be the same name. 
That way, regardless of what button is being pressed and what controller scheme is being used, it knows the action to make. So you can't really put like Sprint Keyboard, Sprint Xbox, Sprint PlayStation, because then it changes the whole name and you have to call that name specifically from the script. And then that kind of defeats the purpose. So, you just have to kind of know. Uh, I mean, realistically, in the description, you could put like keyboard, so on, so forth. But essentially, if you wanted to have like five different controller schemes that you have for your players the ability to play with, you could have the keyboard, Xbox, PlayStation, um, Xbox One, PlayStation 3 or 4, whatever. I don't know if Nintendo controllers work or anything like that. They might. Uh, never tried it. But you just have to make sure that you have the corresponding button for each one in here. But anyway guys, with the old input system, I keep saying old just because I'm trying to stress that, uh, there is a new one that is supposed to make everything way easier and on paper, everything looked way easier, I'm telling you. When I was watching videos on, and descriptions of the new input system, I was like, oh hell yeah, that looks way better. And then I tried it, nothing worked, which means I probably just said something I'm wrong, but I'm an impatient dude and didn't feel like my sort of So, I stuck to this. But anyway guys, so that is how you get the controllers to work and make sure that you can actually, when you're testing anyway, I, I like testing with controllers. Now when you export the game, if you actually finish the game and export it, then the controller schemes will still work. Uh, but that's just how you can rig up the controllers real quick to get some movement. Make sure that you don't need to always mess with the keyboard and mouse. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. If you wanted to see a tutorial on how I made this dude here with his animations, uh, modeling, animating, blah, 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 anything, or if you want to see a scripting tutorial on how I made this, then just let me know in the comments. But yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will catch you the next time some inspiration hits me because honestly, in Corona mode, I haven't done a damn thing. Like most of the world. Just been chillaxing and watching a lot of Survivor. Good show. Anyway, guys, hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace out. These summertime drives, they don't last, Joe.